Blessings and favor, everyone. Welcome to Faith Builders. This is Wednesday night. It's a midweek service. I hope you guys are blessed and had a wonderful day today in this winter-like weather that we're experiencing. You know, I think that we're getting a little bit of glimpse of what's around the corner here in Chicago land. This weather has shifted on us quite a bit. And, uh, you know, it's not uh, cool waking up and it's like 50 degrees outside now when it used to be a little bit warmer. And so uh, makes you want to run for the heater, but don't do it yet. I think we got some warm weather still to come. But uh, nevertheless, God is good, right? And so we thank God for you today as we are checking in. We want to just say hello to everyone and just wish you a very, very, very blessed night. And uh, it's going to be great. Trust me, God is going to speak tremendously to us. And I hope you guys are ready for the word. I hope you guys are ready to be blessed where you are. We thank God for you. We appreciate your faithful support. Uh, we appreciate how much that you share and spread and like the word of God. And so we want to continue to touch uh, the earth with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so you guys always can help us by sharing the message with a friend, by even sharing, uh, clicking like and just uh, liking our page, following us on YouTube, following us on Facebook, following us on Instagram and Twitter. So we appreciate that. We thank God for all of the support. Um, God is doing a great thing in the uh, mass media and the, and the world of, of the electronics and technology. And so we're glad to be a part of it. You know, we appreciate being in church, but also thank God for reaching those that are not inside the four walls as well. And so um, blessings to everyone that is here, just acknowledging everyone. And you guys are just, I know you're eager for the word because you are, you just sound excited. You look excited and I don't even see you. How about that? Um, it's going to be a great night for you. And I just trust that um, God is going to speak and he really has a word tonight. I'm really excited. Uh, about delivering the word. Um, I love teaching the word of God. I love just being in an atmosphere where people are hungry and thirsty. So I just pray tonight that you guys are hungry and thirsty. And you know what happens when you're hungry and thirst after righteousness. The Bible says you shall be filled. And so we want to fill you tonight with the word of God. I also want to remind you at the end, uh, we will share in our Holy Communion time together. And so if you haven't already, you might want to get your elements together. Uh, if you've been at church, you know we have given you your Wednesday Portion. If you uh, don't have the exact elements, as I always say, um, get what is closest or resembling the body of Christ and the blood of, of Christ. And so we thank God for you. Uh, are you guys ready for the word? Because before we get there, I got to do a birthday shout out today. And this is a new week. And I just want to take a minute to first ask if there is any birthdays out there this week. I know we have many this month, but this week is anyone's birthday this week. I do got I'm, I actually got a list of those that follow us um, that on Facebook. And so uh, we may start just kind of checking birthdays on Facebook. Those that actually follow us, not necessarily a member uh, of the church, but a follower of the church. And so we want to acknowledge them as well, too. But if it's anyone's birthday that is watching right now, I'd certainly like to acknowledge you and your birthday week. Uh, but if I if not, I'm going to start reading those that follow us. This is good stuff. Uh, Ladesia Tolliver, known as Prominent Daisy, her birthday is today. Uh, Ladesia moved uh, to a different state was with us for a long time and it's her birthday today so uh prominent daisy if you're watching happy birthday to you uh also today's birthday uh part of word of life church in racine Chiquita cole happy birthday to you i hope you had a blessed day and are having a blessed day with god and also on today uh jarvis brown his birthday is today on september 9th happy birthday to jarvis brown praise god for you and on september 7th uh, Mary Griffin, who actually happens to be my aunt, her birthday was this week, uh, follows us all the time. Happy birthday to you as well. And on the 10th, tomorrow, Tina Graves Hutchinson, which is my cousin, she's a great follower. Happy birthday to her as well. Any other birthdays in the this week on the month of September. Uh, again, I'm just, I'm calling out even those that follow us. We want to make sure we honor you and that we acknowledge you on your special day. Uh, we thank God always for birthdays. Uh, we praise God for being able to celebrate birthdays. And so uh, any others before we move forward, I'd love to acknowledge anyone that is following or watching right now uh, a happy birthday. And so we're going to begin momentarily, but let me say it one last time. Blessed birthday to all that are within this week here. Uh, happy birthday day to a niece in May that was born. Hey man, on 9-8, praise God. Your niece, new niece, May. Praise God. Happy birthday to her. Hallelujah. So we thank God for all of the birthdays um, and thanking God for you being watching uh, with us tonight. And so uh, before we go into the word, uh, just a very special announcement um, just to keep our family in prayer. It's been a very 
difficult time of the year. Those that don't know, many do know uh, that my father-in-law, Pastor Shauna's father, uh, Pastor Diane's husband, passed away on yesterday, Pastor Mike McCall. And so we um, are very, very torn. Our hearts are broken, but yet we know God doesn't make mistakes. So please lift up the family in prayer um, as we have been going through very, very strategic times, perilous times, very challenging times. Uh, we don't understand God's will, but obviously God had a plan that's greater than ours, and so we have to uh, accept that plan. So my, my friends that are watching, all of my faithful supporters, prayer warriors, please lift our family in prayer. This is our second patriarch this year in a matter of months. Uh, my father passed a couple months ago, and now my wife's father passed, and so these are the patriarchs of our family, and so it's very devastating, but yet we are still rejoicing and praising God uh, that God has a greater plan that we don't see, and so we definitely solicit um, your prayers moving forward, saints of God, and so we thank God that you guys are great supporters, and so uh, just continue to lift the family in prayer so that we can continue to move forward and stay strong uh, in God. And so praise God tonight. We're going to go into prayer and um, we're going to go right into the word of God. And so uh, I know you guys are with me tonight. I know you're praying. I feel your prayers already. I feel the support. I feel uh, the lifting of God's spirit moving right now in the atmosphere. And so, Father, we thank you. Lord, we honor you. We bless you right now. God, you sit high and yet you look low. And so you concern God about everything we deal with, go through, see, feel, touch, Lord God. We praise you tonight, Lord, that you are not far from us. You are very uh, much with us right now. And so, God, we acknowledge you. Lord God, we walk in the path and the plan that you have declared for our lives. And so, Lord, we just call upon you and your strength by your spirit tonight uh, to deliver your word to your people, Lord God. And we pray um, that you would get the glory and honor, Father, in uh, our time together, that you would enlighten us, that you would enrich us, that you, God, would just cause us to become greater, Lord God, in you. And so, Father, our hearts, our minds are focused on you tonight. And we give you praise, glory, and we give you all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So we're going into the word of God tonight with me. Second uh, Corinthians chapter number three, verse number 13. Again, welcome all that are joining in. Uh, just click that share button. Share this with a friend. There's a good word tonight um, that I believe is going to bless the church, the global church, not just a local church, but I believe the global church is going to benefit from this word. Uh, it's kind of going to give us a little bit of understanding of where we are now, uh, how to navigate through these times and what's going on. And so we want to follow God and his spirit and see what he has to say for us. So 2 Corinthians chapter 3, I'm going to read verses 13 through verses 18. Here's what Paul says. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the law of Moses, the veil is upon their heart. Verse 16, nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. When it shall turn unto the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. When America turns back to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Our communities, our regions turning back to the Lord like we should, the veil that kept us blinded, that kept us in restraint, that kept us lacking, that kept us behind is going to be taken away. Just say to the Lord right now, God, remove the veil. Say that out loud where you are, where you're sitting. God, remove the veil. Verse number 17, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Just say amen for the word tonight as we're going to move deeply in discussing this veil, this veil. And so I want to start out with uh, something more along the lines of kind of bringing us into tonight's conversation, the message, uh, and just talking about one of the greatest uh, times ever in sports 
history that I believe that we've experienced. I mean, again, this there's there is a certain type of sport. Uh, sports that brings the whole world together and it's called the Olympics is one thing I missed this year as I missed the 2020 Olympics I don't know about you but I enjoy watching the Olympics because it's a chance to see all these different countries on the same platform competing you know honestly competing now they might be warring in other areas but on that one platform called the Olympics the world comes together and you I actually enjoy I watch certain sports that I have no interest in any other time Time, but during the time of the Olympics, all of a sudden, archery becomes fun to watch. During the time of the Olympics, all of a sudden, gymnastics becomes fun to watch. Now, I'm not against those that like it, but on a normal day, I wouldn't be watching archery. I wouldn't be watching, you know, gymnastics or diving. But when it comes to the Olympics, it's something about bringing nations together that draws our attention. And one of the greatest times ever in the Olympics that I want to recall your attention to, there are many great moments, but one of the greatest moments to me that I remember the Olympics was the 1992 Olympic Dream Team. All right. Those of you that know the Dream Team, you know what I'm talking about right away. It is, it was and is the USA's men's basketball team that represented our country. I mean, it's like the, 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 uh, the United States had gotten tired of coming close and even losing. And so we had to put our best forward. And so in that particular year, the United States of America took from the NBA the best players and put together a team that was called the Dream Team. And it was built with some of the greatest players ever. I mean, you're looking at Hall of Fame players. I'll just say some of the names to you. We had Larry Bird. We had Magic Johnson. We had Michael Jordan. We had Scottie Pippen. We had David Robertson. We had Patrick Ewing. We had Charles Barkley. We had Clyde Drexler. We had Chris Mullins. We had John Stockton. We had Carl Malone. You even had the college guy, Christian Leitner. And all these men represented the dream team. Now, what they did was amazing. I mean, I think that the opponents they were playing against were so much in awe of them that they couldn't even play their game. They were just in awe of Jordan and Magic and, and Pippen. They were just in awe of Bird. And, and I'm thinking, wow, there was one moment, though, outside of just the playing of the game. I mean, you're looking at the Dream Team step on the greatest platform ever in Barcelona, and what they did there was just astronomical. They just blew teams away and, and brought that gold home. But there was a moment even beyond that, uh, uh, that surrounding the Dream Team that really stood out the most to me. And that's what I bring to your attention tonight. There was a point that stood out that the old was getting ready to fade away and we saw the emergence of the new, the fading of the old. Now, what are you saying to me? You might be asking, what is he talking about? Well, let's think about this thing. Go back to 1992. There were two top players that really came into the NBA prior to this years before, and they brought the NBA back up to a level of prominence. OK, and those two players were Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. And they were on that dream team, 1992. And so they represent the old, but little did they know that the old, it wasn't that they weren't good. It wasn't that they weren't great. It wasn't that they weren't important, but they represented the current glory in the league that was fading away. They were the current glory that people looked to, that they leaned on for many years. Boston versus LA, Bird versus Magic, and we had the three-point shooting and the wild passing, and so they represented a time of that current glory that we leaned on, but little did we know, and many people didn't recognize it, but I did. There was an emergence of a new glory, and his name was Michael Jordan. And what we seen in those 1992 Olympics was the world got a glimpse of the greatest player ever. Now, Magic and Bird were great and are some of the greatest players ever to play the game of basketball. But they were the current glory and they had to move over because the young future glory had stepped in. Something new had came in and he brought a whole new aura and raised an NBA level to even a higher standard. And the future glory of the NBA at that moment rested upon one man, Michael Jordan. 
I know some are jumping off their seat right now, reminiscing of the times down there at the stadium in United Center of Jordan, literally carrying the Bulls into six championships and building up other mediocre players and putting them on the prominent stage. And those players that would have been nothing became something because they played with Jordan. Jordan in that era, 1992, the Olympics, he now represented the future glory of the NBA and the world got a chance to see it. You might wonder, where am I going with that today? What is that so important about? Well, I'm showing you that there was a glory that was currently in the world in the Old Testament time, which was fading away and a new glory was coming in. And I want to show you in Exodus chapter 34. You can go there if you want. But do you remember, and I'm just kind of bringing this together here, Moses was called up to Sinai to meet with God. The man Moses the humble, the prophet, the man. He was called before the Lord because God wanted to commune with him. God wanted to fellowship and talk with him. God had uh, some insight and information that he wanted to give the man Moses. And so Moses went up, and if you read in that 34th chapter, you will find out that Moses fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Now, it wasn't just any old fast. It was a fast that the Bible says even without water. And so I don't know about you, but to go 40 days, 40 nights without water, I mean, you definitely have to be called by God into a fast that's going to restrict your body, not only from the nourishment of food, but even from the hydration of water. And so to hear and the glory of show me some Sometimes to hear God's voice, to know the plan of God, to receive from God. Sometimes, guys, you got to go into a time of fasting and praying. There are some things that Jesus said, some spirits that only come out by fasting and praying. There's some things that, that try to hold on to our world, our society. And I strongly believe uh, that God is calling uh, for a global fast. Can I get an amen to that? I mean, we amen a lot of stuff, but when it comes to turn over the plate, it's like, whoa, wait a second here. And I believe that God is looking to the church now to really call a global fast because there are some things in our world that needs to be broken. There are some spirits in our world that need to be dismantled. There are some things that are going on lingering that's destroying and dividing and disrupting God's plan. And I believe even as Moses went up in order for him to lead and to guide the children of Israel into that place where they needed to be, he needed to restrict himself so he can hear God. And I believe that there are times that we need to restrict ourselves. We need to restrict ourselves from the amenities of life and the things that we have so freely. And we need to put that stuff on the shelf or in the closet and just go into our secret place and seek God. Moses was at that mount 40 days, 40 nights. And let me give you a revelation right now. How do you think Moses made it 40 days and 40 nights? Moses was able to make it through that time because Moses lived off of what God was saying. Are you hearing me tonight? Moses lived off the word of God. You got to understand what I'm saying because Jesus, when he was tempted by Satan, fasting 40 days, 40 nights in the wilderness, he spoke to Satan. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. My friends, the only way that Moses made it 40 days, 40 nights is because he started now to eat not natural food, but he ate from what God was saying. That it's telling me that when God feeds you or when you fed by the word of God, it is able not only to build your spirit, but it's also able to build your natural body. And so that's why you can make it through those paths, because when you eat of God, his word will sustain you, right? His word will keep you. His word will build you up. His word will strengthen you. Even when your natural body becomes weak, one word from God begins to inject strength in you that you didn't thought you had. And so Moses made it. 40 days and 40 nights. And in those 40 days, 40 nights, he was commanded to write the commandments. We know the story. We know the Ten Commandments. And so you're thinking, man, you know, I hear what you're saying, God. And God was saying, I don't just need you to hear what I'm saying, Moses. You know, sometimes we just hear, but God was saying, listen, I need you to write this down. I need you to get the tablets and I need you to write down what I'm saying. This is a time where I believe that we don't need to just go by memory. We need to have some things written down. We need to have it written in our hearts, written in a Bible, written in a book, written in a diary or a journal. Write it down. 
And I know there are many people that love to, to journal and write down the things in their notes. And so it's good because when God begins to speak, and I know we have modern technology where we can pick our phone up and we can just dictate into our phone, well, whatever you got to do, write it down. Because God is not just dealing with our memory, because sometimes as you get older, you know your memory gets bad and you forget things. And so God was saying to Moses, I need you to write down my commandments because what I'm telling you, there is no room for error when you go down. Are you hearing me? Holy Spirit tonight is speaking. There's no room for you to make a mistake because these words are the very words that my people are to live by. And so you can't just try to put it in your memory. I need you to write down what I'm saying to you. And I believe that Moses took heed to that as he wrote it down. He was heeding to God so that he could communicate exactly what God was saying so he could speak to the people. And it's something that happened to Moses when Moses came down from that mountain. When Moses came down from that place of meeting God at Sinai, he came down shining. He went up looking one way, but he came back shining. He came back gleaming. He came back on full tilt, on full bright. He was just glowing all over. Why? Because he was in God's presence. Time in God's presence will change your life. Are you hearing me tonight? 40 days, 40 nights. Moses came down with the glory of the Lord upon him. He came down shining so bright. And I'm telling you today, and I challenge you, actually, my friends, spend time in the presence of God. And what do I mean? Not just coming inside of a church. Get into the presence of God wherever you are. What do you mean by the presence of God? Get into a place where God only is worshiped. God only is acknowledged where everything else might be what it is. But I'm in a place where I'm at the foot of the cross and I'm hearing directly from God. It's me and him. Holy Spirit is moving and God is speaking through him and I'm in his presence receiving. When you find yourself in the presence of God, really, saints and friends, it will change you. It will change your thinking. It will change your continence. It'll change your heart. It'll change your tongue. When you spend time in the presence of God, it will change everything about you. And I don't know about you that I love living in the presence of God, but there are times that I need to go deeper into the presence of God because there are areas of life that I need to change. Whenever I find something in me that needs to be changed, I go deeper into the presence of God. I don't just go surface deep because I don't want to be cleansed on the outside. I want to be cleansed on the inside. And so I find that those times of change, the, the call for me to go deeper into where God is. And I believe that's good for all of us, that when we really want to change, you don't just go skin deep into God. You go all the way in. You dive in as far as you can get and as far as he allow you to go. And I believe that when he does that, you will be changed. Just like Moses came down from Mount Sinai, he was shining, he was glistening. The glory was upon his life. And it's something about that, that measure of glory, that shining radiance, that the Bible actually only records really two men that shone like that from his glory, that was shining. One was Moses and the other was in the New Testament. His name was Stephen. You can get it in Acts chapter 16, verse 15. Out of all the people in the Bible, God chose to only insert two that experienced the continents of his glory that people could see. Isn't that something? Stephen and Moses, humble men, men that love God, do God's will. Of course, there were other humble people in the Bible, but God chose to mention only two. It's very interesting. His initial contact, Moses, he came in contact with the people and the glory of God was upon him so greatly that it drove the people back. It drove them away. It drove the leaders away. It drove Aaron, his brother, back. You read uh, uh, Exodus chapter 34, and you will find that he had to call them back unto him. It was something about the glory that caused people to kind of, whoa, I can't play with that. It's something about the glory upon your life that you, it will either draw people, or it will drive people. And in this case here, Moses came down from meeting with God at Sinai and the people were awestruck that they backed away from Moses. And Moses said, here, you got to come forward because I have a message from God directly to you. And so the presence of God upon Moses, it caused him to have to now wear a veil upon his face when he talked with the people. 
But you know this here, when he went into God, he had to take that veil off because the glory was talking to the glory. The glory that was upon Moses was now speaking with the glory, which is God. Glory speaking to glory. And so when he met with God, you could take it off. When you went into that tabernacle or the tent, excuse me, you could take the veil off. But to, to talk to the people, Moses had to put a veil over his face. And I'm going through it with this tonight because the power of his presence will even affect others around you. When you are really in the presence of God, there's no wonder why sometimes, you know, people are drawn away from you. And many times we get maybe offended. Why do they not want to be around me? Why are they, you know, treating me different in a certain kind of way? Or why are they, you know, just kind of shrugging me off like I'm nothing? Well, it could be the fact, my friends, that the glory of the Lord is so much upon your life that it's causing them to be a little intimidated by the radiance of God upon you. And so don't fear and and, and shrink back because if you've been in God's presence and others haven't, there will be an effect that you have on their lives. They will either be uh, drawn back from you or drawn to you. And if they're drawn from you, please don't take it personal. God's glory upon you is causing an effect around you in the earth. And I believe that God wants his glory to affect the earth more upon our lives. When we are glory carriers, when we are glory seekers and carriers, wherever we go, we are now displaying the power of God. And I'm telling you, when people want God, they're going to come to you. But if they don't want God, they're going to be drawn from you. And so let the glory speak. Let the glory begin to reveal and let the glory begin to uh, show the power of God. Just as in Moses today, he had to call him back and say, hey, guys, don't leave me come back I need you because this word is for you and I'm looking at this power of God upon Moses' life and upon your lives as well as you are glory carriers. I certainly believe that when you go in places, there's going to be a recognition that God's power is upon your life. I'm speaking to someone tonight that there is a greater recognition upon you that men, women are going to see that the power of God is present in you. They're going to know that you've been in the presence of the glory of God. And so don't be upset if some things don't turn out like you thought it would or some people, you know, start to shone away from you. They don't want to experience the glory. That's fine. But there is somebody that wants the glory tonight. I don't know who it is, but someone watching me tonight wants the glory of God upon their life. And God wants to reveal and release it to you tonight in a greater measure. But what's going to have to happen is that we got to remove the veil. Hmm. Hallelujah. We've got to remove the veil. In the book of Exodus 34, just go to verse 33, 34, and 35. I'm going to go there for a moment. The Bible says, and Moses, or until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel, that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him, who is God. The question comes tonight, why would Moses put a veil over his face when talking to the people? What is the real reason why Moses, the man of God, coming down, talking to the people of God, had been with God, would want to cover the glory of God so the people didn't see it in its fullness? You would think that he would want people to see and feel the presence of God. You're coming down from Mount Sinai. You've been with God. Wouldn't you think, I mean, you and I, naturally speaking, you know, we've been with God. You want people to see the power of God upon your life. But in this instance here, he had to put a veil. He didn't want them to see that glory upon his life. And it brings me to the question tonight is why would Moses veil his face to cover the glory? Wow. Just think about that for a minute. Because as I go deeper into the scripture tonight from Paul, Paul gives us the revelation of why Moses veiled his face 
Why Moses, when he talked to God, took the veil off. We understand glory meets with glory. But when you're dealing with people, you want people to experience the glory of God. So why, you know, would you, Moses, remove the veil? Why would you take it off and, and, and cause the people not to experience what you experienced, Moses? What, what was the meaning behind this? Well, Paul gives us this revelation as we look back at 2 Corinthians chapter 3. The veil, my friends, it represented the middle ground or wall between two systems tonight. Are you hearing me? It represented that wall or the ground, that middle position between one system and another system. There were two systems at front. There was the old and there was the new. And that veil now represented the in-between of two systems. And the Israelites were blinded to a system, my friends. The Bible says that when we return to that old system, we actually veil our hearts from the truth. When we return back to that old system. And so therefore, the Israelites, they were blinded. They couldn't see. And so they were, they were blinded from the truth. They wanted to turn back to something. But no, you couldn't see that that. that Old. And so God is showing us tonight that when we turn to God's new system, the veil is actually taken away. And you follow me tonight? There were two systems at, at, uh, on, on Front Street. There were two systems that are being accounted for tonight. And we're looking at the old covenant. And we're looking at the new covenant. And we look at the old and the new. There was something that separated the two, and that was a veil. We look at it in Jesus' day. There was the veil of the temple. There was the veil that separated the, that, that place of the holiest of holies of all. It was a veil. It was a veil that people could not, the average person could not go beyond only the high priest. And so we see that there was a veil also in the minds of the people that once they crossed over into the new, there was no going back to the old. And when we turn to God's new system, the Bible said the veil is removed. The veil is taken away. And so in Mark, I want to go to the book of Mark chapter 15 and verse 38. And this is good stuff here. The Israelites were blinded to a system, my friends. They were blinded. They were blinded. And that's what Paul was saying. When you return back to an old system, you are now putting a veil over truth. You're not hiding the truth because he was saying the truth is supposed to set you free. You shall know the truth. The Bible says that and the truth shall make us free. But when you return back to something, you are now covering the truth. And so we've got to unveil the truth so that we could live tonight, my friends. If you believe that, I want you to give God a praise and say, God, I thank you tonight for truth living on the inside of me. Say that with me right now, my friends. Thank you, God, for truth living on the inside of me. Mark chapter number 15 and verse number 38. If you want to turn there with me as I go there. It says, and the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. Mark 15 and 38. And the veil of the temple was rent from the top to the bottom. This was the mark of the end of one system. And the beginning of a new system. It marked the end of the old covenant and it also now announced the entrance into the new covenant. And I believe that God is speaking to us tonight that as said before, and I've said this before, and God keeps adding revelation to this as I want to bless you tonight. The renting of the veil, it calls the unemployment rate of the temple to rise. Are you hearing me tonight? The renting of the veil cause the unemployment rate of that time of the temple to rise up. Now people needed jobs. Priests, high priests, they needed jobs. They were no longer needed to sacrifice and to perform the functions that they performed before. Now they're unemployed. And Jesus comes on the scene and he says, listen, I know how to deal with the unemployment rate. He said, drop your net, follow me. Drop what you're doing, follow me. Drop your mantle, follow me. Drop all that you have and simply follow me. What's going to help our unemployment rate this now? in our time today we need the world to stop what they're doing and follow Jesus Jesus dealt with the unemployment rate of the temple he said listen if you want to be gainfully employed if you want to leave this old system this old job this old way of which your 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 services are no longer needed priest high priest follow me 
I'm telling you right now, I'm giving you a full food plan on how to deal with the unemployment rate. If we turn back to Jesus, Jesus will make a way, my friends. If we turn back to Jesus, Jesus will open up some new doors. When we turn back to Jesus, Jesus will fix it. If we turn back to Jesus, he will open up the right doors. I believe tonight that what we're dealing with in our world is simply a lack of Jesus. Can I get an amen to that? What we're dealing with right now is a lack of Jesus in our lives. And so we need to make sure that we release more of Jesus wherever we go. Paul begins to explain this revelation as I dealt with the question of why. Why would Moses want to veil his face so the people didn't see? In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. Here's what it said back to our text. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. Are you hearing that tonight? And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. There was a glory upon the old covenant. But it was fading away. There was, and let me say it again to get you to understand. Moses, when he spoke to the people, put a veil over his face because he was representing an old system, the old covenant. You would think, wow, it was just, God was just instituting it. No, what God is saying is, is that it is going to fade away. Don't hang on to it because it is only leading you to the new. So I can't show you the full glory because it's hidden within the new covenant. And so Moses coming forth now, representing the old covenant, it was fading away. And so therefore, the veil over the face of Moses was not there to protect the people um, from fear of coming to him. You would think, man, maybe Moses had the veil on because he was trying to protect the people they feared but it wasn't for fear it was simply saying listen the veil is a sign that it is coming to an end one day that which is now is going to fade away but that which is coming is going to be eternal and his name is Jesus Jesus was coming with the new covenant Jesus was coming with the new system. And so the veil was there and there was the in between. And Moses represented at that moment the veil that is in the temple of that holy place as the as the high priest served. Are you hearing me tonight, my friends? Moses, that veil that he wore was representative of the veil that was torn from top to bottom when Jesus said it's finished and he gave up the ghost and that veil was twain from top. Guess what was happening right there? The old system of which we counted on and lived by was now coming to an end. But listen to this very carefully here. The old covenant would come to an end. But if the people were able to see the shining glory of of God upon Moses, they would try to hold on to that time. And you know, we are prone to do that as, as you know, citizens, as natural people. We want to hold on to something because it's good. And my friends, it is not that the old covenant was bad. It's not that the old, old covenant system was something that never should have been. God himself instituted that covenant. And so we know it was good. It had a purpose. But when Jesus came, he abolished it. It was no longer necessary for the believer when we come to him. We are not under the old covenant system. And so if you try to go back, as Paul was saying, you are now placing a veil over your heart. That's why I said even now when the Moses is read, you are now putting a veil back over your heart. You are not receiving. And so now I begin to look at this deeper into what God is saying, that God is now shifting our world in which there is an old glory that was good for the moment, good for a time. But I believe that going through this year, we're finding out that that old is now passing away and God's got a fresh move in the earth. God is reforming the earth. God is restoring the earth. God is now infusing the earth with a fresh rain up from heaven. And I believe tonight that in this old system, we've got to let go of some things 
things that we have gotten used to. We've got to let go of some things that formerly we depended in and we thought which was right. And God is saying tonight, I need you to embrace what I'm doing now in the earth. Even as the Bible said, behold, I do a new thing in you. And I believe that God is trying to do something new to us, but it's already uh, residing in the sight of him. He is trying to reform us back into what he originally planned for his church. And I believe that the veil has to come down. We got to remove the blinders. We got to get rid of the middle wall. We got to get rid of the thing that is keeping us now from experiencing the true presence of God. It's time to embrace and now do what God is saying. Do and let go of the past, whether it was good or whether it was bad. That's why Paul said, I let go and I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. I release. I let go of it. I don't worry about it, whether it was good or not good. I'm embracing what God is doing right now. God is shifting our world into this new glory. This is why Moses had the veil over his face because they could not see the actual presence of God's glory or they would have tried to hold on to that moment. And there are many people right now holding on to a moment and you need to let go of that moment and enter into the real presence of God right now. Let go of the moment and enter into the place of the true glory of God that wants to rise up on the inside of you. If you believe that, just say amen right where you are. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, this is powerful. I want to take my time and finish this up the right way as I know that uh, we are doing some things here and, and I believe that God is speaking right now and I know the enemy is trying to provoke uh, certain things to try to stop this message from going forth but I know that the enemy has already been defeated and God's word shall always prevail no matter what's going on even in social media land even in the Wi-Fi area we know that God has it under control and so God is shifting his presence by his spirit. And when I look back at what Paul was speaking to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, God now was shifting his presence by his spirit then as he's doing right now. It's not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. By my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. It's by the spirit of God. And so God now was shifting things in the day of Moses, even into the day of Paul. And Paul begins to explain it, that it was by his spirit that he was moving and releasing a greater glory. And it was by his spirit that Jesus would go to the cross and die a criminal-like death and now cause the veil of the temple to be torn from top to bottom. It was by his spirit. And what Paul says, Paul says that God is that spirit. Are you hearing me tonight? God is that spirit. He said the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, he said there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord, God himself is that spirit. God was shifting. God was moving. God was causing the old to pass and making way for the new to come. And Paul said that God is that spirit. And where God is, where his spirit is, there is Freedom, that simply means liberty is freedom and freedom translate into access. And what Paul was saying at that moment, that where God's spirit is, my friends, there is access into the greater glory. Where God's spirit is, my friends, there is access into a greater realm of anointing and power of God that he wants to move in our life. And so I believe tonight that we got to grab a hold of this revelation that came out of the mouth of Paul and say, listen, that veil was not a fear of entering into God's presence. It was actually protecting the people from holding on to an old system. But once the new come, let go of the old and receive the new. Receive the freedom of God. Receive, my friends, the liberty of God because that's access into the greater realms of his glory. This is where God is taking his church right now. He's taking us into greater realms of his glory. How many of you want to go into greater realms of his glory? I don't know about you, but I'm headed there. I'm in there. I want to stay there. I want to make my abode in his presence right there. And I'm saying tonight, my friends, that the glory of the Lord is powerful and it's here right now and it's shifting the earth. It's a glory shift. And you got to get in this top of this glory shift because we want to be the carriers of his glory into the next generation, into the next that he raises up. And so, my friends, where his spirit is, where his presence is, where his spirit is, there is access into the new. Let's go in that thing tonight and never come out. Let's stay in his presence. Remove the veil now because the old has been abolished. 
the new is here. Remove the veil. It's time now to let go of all we've experienced in 2020. Yes, it's some of it's been devastating. It's been, you know, crisis moments. It's been chaotic. It's been a lot of pain, tears, hurt. It's been a lot. But through it all, my friends, we got to let go because God is doing something newer in the earth, a greater measure of his glory. Let's pray tonight. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord God, that you have released a greater presence of your glory upon the earth. Lord, we recognize tonight, God, that it is not by our own might, nor by our own power, but by your spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And so where your spirit is, we know that there is liberty. Where your spirit is, God, there is access. And so, Father, we are ready to access the greater realms of your anointing. Father, just as that man Moses came down from Mount Sinai and had to cover his face with a veil because the people, he protected them from holding on to a system that was fading. Lord, tonight we let go now of that fading system. We let go now of that fading time, Lord God, and we embrace the new of what you released in the earth. And Lord, I thank you that the new is really not new. It's new to us because we've never seen it, but yet it's old with you because you are here in the beginning. You are the beginning. You are the father of all time. And so, Lord, we trust tonight that as we continue to endeavor to stay in your presence, you would allow us access, Lord God, into this glory of what is being released now for the church, that we will be encouraged, Lord God, to move in that place, to stay in that realm of your grace. And God, we give you glory and honor. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Just say with me tonight, I'm a glory carrier. I'm walking in the new glory of God. Praise God. Perhaps you may not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Well, we could stop right now and you can make him Lord. We could stop right now. What we're doing, we could say, Lord, I need you to come into my life. I make you Lord. I make you now Lord of all. Father, I thank you. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. And I believe in my heart, God, that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I believe that I am saved. Saved from my sins. Saved from a lifetime or eternity with the enemy. I now have my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. My friends, if you prayed that, you're saved right now. I want to thank God for you because you are not part of the kingdom of God. You are not part of this glorious kingdom that shall reign and rule in the earth. And so I hope tonight you guys have received this word of God. I hope you, hope you were blessed by it. I hope that God released something greater upon you. I know that as you are watching, there might have been an interruption in the message and hopefully wherever it interrupted at, you can go back to it and you can get in tune with it. We're doing our best and Obviously, the word tonight, enemy's trying to fight it, but it's going to go forth and it's going to cover what God said it's supposed to do. And so, my friends, we're going to celebrate our time of communion together. We're going to partake of this body and blood of Jesus. I invite you to call in for prayer tonight because the word of God still went forth. We're believing that God is still moving in this hour right now. Regardless of what happened, what's going on, we believe that God is moving. And so I want you to get the bread in your hand, and we're going to prepare momentarily here to partake of his body and blood. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Taking the bread in your hand, I want you to break it. I just want you to give thanks. Just simply saying, God, I thank you. Thank you for the body. Thank you for having it broken for me so that I can be made whole. I eat in total victory. Eat, my friends. After the same manner, of course, he took the cup, which represents the New Testament of his blood. And my friends, I want you to take the cup, and I want you to just simply get, say with me, God, I thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed for me. Now drink all of it.
as often as we eat and drink, and we do show forth the Lord's victory till he come. Amen? Praise God tonight. I hope that you've enjoyed the word. I pray that you would, if you were interrupted for a moment, be able to go back to it and visit it in its entirety. I pray that we can get it uploaded. Maybe a YouTube, you can go there and we'll make it available. We'll send out a message. However, we can work it out prayerfully. We hope that you can enjoy uh, the rest of the message wherever it was interrupted at. And so I bless your seed right now. Father, I thank you for those that are giving, that have the heart and the mind to give, that are prepared to give. And Lord, I bless the seeds that's sown tonight. Lord, I pray that uh, the seed, Lord, that they give, it is sown in good ground and that it yields a harvest for them. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that you're meeting every need. Lord, according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And Lord, that we are fully supplied. We lack nothing. And God, I thank you tonight, God, that our, our giving time represents our heart's posture to you, that we appreciate you and we thank you for all you have done for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, my friends, I, I want you to uh, call in for prayer. You know the number, it's 701-802-5269. Our access code is 3710737. Uh, there is host that is praying now that will be praying for you, and we're going to believe God that we're stepping into this, this new system, this thing that God is doing in the earth. God has interrupted everything and allowed everything to be interrupted that his glory now can be shifted in the earth in a great way. And so I just pray that you will shift with us into this new measure of God's glory. Man, this is a powerful word. So if you didn't get all of it, please, please try and find your way back to it and get all that God said because God was speaking powerfully. I mean, the veil from Moses, man, to now, the veil in the temple. I thank God that Moses had the veil on so that old could fade and so Jesus could come and cause the real veil to rent from top to bottom so that we now can walk in this new. Praise God for the new. Thank God for the glory being upon us. Christ, the hope of glory in you and in me. Thank God tonight for you. I want to invite you to join me back Friday as uh, me and Elder Kevin, Dr. Stallworth, sit together and continue to discuss racial reconciliation. How do we see reconciliation in our land? How do we see God, you know, bringing, bringing parties together so that we can walk together and agree, as Amos said? And so we're believing that God is going to use our conversation to tear down some walls that separated cultures, that separated society, and bringing us together as the body of Christ. And so join me uh, Friday at 6 o'clock p.m., we thank God for you again, thanking you for all the prayers uh, for our family and the loss of our father-in-law, Pastor Mike McCall. Uh, I pray that you guys will continue to hold us up, Pastor Diane, uh, Pastor Shauna, you know, all, all of my brothers and sisters. Hold us up in prayer as we navigate through a very, very difficult, challenging time. And so we're believing that God is going to get the victory and glory out of this even still. And so we love you with the love of Jesus. And so I want to just pray. And as, as I pray, I want you to make sure you have a blessed rest of your night and a blessed day. And I will see you guys back on Friday at 6 p.m. Father, I thank you now for your glory and your power. Now as we depart from this place, God, let us not depart from your presence, but let us leave confessing that we're blessed, we're prosperous, we're healthy, and we're wealthy. And all the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 are mine and yours in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. See you Friday at 6 o'clock p.m.